Did you know that South Dakota is one of America's least densely populated states? Well, it is, as South Dakota has less than 900,000 residents and just 10.7 people per square mile, with more cattle than people and the highest cattle to person ratio in the entire United States. In fact, the whole state of South Dakota has a population that's about 10 times smaller than metropolitan Chicago, 13 times smaller than Metro Los Angeles, and 24 times smaller than Metro New York, making South Dakota appear tiny not just when compared to other U.S. states, but with just the city limits of Houston, Texas dwarfing its total statewide population. If you look here on the map, you can see that South Dakota isn't limited by landmass, though. No, it has more area than powerful, highly populated states, places like Florida, New York, and Georgia. But that's the point of this video. For a state of its significant size, it's as if nobody lives in South Dakota. Before I explain why, that is why nobody lives in South Dakota, we should probably look at South Dakota's journey from being part of the Dakota Territory, which initially included North and South Dakota, of course, but also the majority of Wyoming and Montana. Side note, while South Dakota is technically a Midwestern state, it also borders the Western region of the US, which was overwhelmingly populated by various American Indian tribes at that time. That's why so many Western cities, states, and landmarks are named after historically important Indian tribes. That's the case for Dakota, its biggest city of Sioux Falls, and the beautiful Sioux waterfalls that run through the city. Anyway, while other portions of the Midwest were struggling with depopulation in the decades that followed America's golden era of the 1950s, with the manufacturing boom that brought endless growth and prosperity to the Midwest region abruptly ending as businesses headed overseas and residents fled south. The state of South Dakota remained largely unchanged, with a stagnant population, avoiding the kind of deterioration that happened in other parts of the Midwest, but still struggling in its own right. In fact, that's a big part of why South Dakota has such a limited population today. If you look here on the graph, you can see that South Dakota grew significantly alongside its fellow Midwestern states before eventually stagnating, but it never teetered on the brink of collapse like Michigan, Ohio, and other Midwestern states. Of course, that's just one of the many reasons for South Dakota's unremarkable populace. But when you consider that South Dakota nearly doubled its population from 328,000 residents when it joined the Union in 1889 to nearly 600,000 residents just 21 years later in 1910, while only adding about 98,000 more residents over the following 80 years, well, those regional headwinds that plagued the entire Midwest really affected the state's ability to drive growth. Though with that being said, the state of South Dakota could be entering a new boom period in the coming decades as the vast open spaces, towering mountains, and awe-inspiring landscapes that have made South Dakota one of America's most uniquely beautiful states, along with its focus on personal freedom and its recent economic successes, relaxed business regulations, and low taxes, have all given this historically rural state a rare second chance at exponential growth. Though, if I'm being completely honest here, the residents that I've spoken with would much prefer things to just remain as they are as South Dakota is one of just two U.S. states that doesn't levy a state income tax on residents or corporations, and South Dakota is ranked second in nation for fiscal stability, third in nation for environmental cleanliness, all while also having the ability to draw in millions of tourists every year. That's because South Dakota offers some of America's best outdoor opportunities, along with its uniquely astonishing topography. But South Dakota isn't just picturesque views that make you feel like you're living in a postcard, or Mount Rushmore, which is a real national treasure by the way, or even one of the nation's top agricultural economies. No, there are real reasons for very few people choosing to live in South Dakota. For starters, the state has just two legitimate cities, Sioux Falls and Rapid City, as South Dakota's third largest city, Aberdeen, has less than 30,000 residents and Rapid City, located in the sparsely populated western portion of the state, has less than 80,000 residents itself. Meaning that outside of Sioux Falls, with a population of nearly 200,000 residents, opportunities and city amenities there are as limited as South Dakota's population. That's important because amenities, attractions, and opportunities are instrumental to healthy population growth. While something like having the nation's highest bison population simply isn't. And frankly, South Dakota's agricultural and tourism-based economy in many ways leaves a lot to be desired in general. See, about 90% of South Dakota is farmland, with ranchers owning the majority of the state's land. 
that leaves limited space for business operations, affordable new housing, and future residents to really thrive. That concern is even more significant pretty much anywhere west of the state's capital in Pierre. And if you look here on the map, you can see that South Dakota's population is based mostly around its principal city of Sioux Falls. Both of the state's major universities, South Dakota State University and the University of South Dakota, are located within a short drive of Sioux Falls. And with South Dakota completely lacking any professional sports franchises, the NCAA athletic programs at those schools are what give many South Dakotans something to root for. Especially with the South Dakota State Jackrabbits just winning this year's FCS College Football Championship. And while South Dakota isn't home to any Fortune 500 companies, its ability to attract big businesses has always been based on, well, Sioux Falls. With major corporations like Wells Fargo, Smithfield Foods, and Citibank all having a significant presence in the city. In fact, 22% of all South Dakota residents live within the city limits of Sioux Falls. But Sioux Falls, often referred to as Sufu by the locals, is located less than 15 minutes from the borders of more economically significant states like Iowa and Minnesota, so it benefits heavily from non-South Dakota growth anyway. Which circles us back to the purpose of this video, why nobody lives in South Dakota. And like I said earlier, it's a Midwestern regional decline, limited land availability, and a lack of city building. But it's also South Dakota's problematic physical geography, with South Dakota having a lot of rugged mountainous terrain, difficult cold winters, and with portions of the state being located in Tornado Alley. South Dakota also has notoriously poor infrastructure, with its potholes being the stuff of memes. And with 17% of the state's bridges being structurally deficient, and the state needing nearly a billion dollars in clean drinking water investment. Much of South Dakota also lacks access to broadband internet, with no more than 28% of the residents in over half of South Dakota's counties having access to high-speed internet as of 2021. But South Dakota has recently broken its long-standing population growth trends, with the state's population uptrending at a meaningful rate over the past decade or so, after being stagnant for nearly a century. So for better or worse, South Dakota's population may not be so limited for much longer. Though prices are quickly rising too, as quaint little towns are quickly becoming resort cities, with wealthy out-of-towners buying up second and third homes, making South Dakota increasingly unaffordable for the people that love it the most.